Hello everyone, it's time to talk some more about reactions. We are going to start out with getting into what the equilibrium constant is and how we get to it. Let's do it. Okay, so we left off last time with this description of reaction equilibrium. So this is what's true when we are at reaction equilibrium. So we're going to do some fancy things to the math. You recall this part here is what turned into delta G at the reaction temperature. You worked that out before. And so we're going to move that just to make things a little more compact. We're going to move that over to the other side of the equation. And we are going to bring the RT over to sit underneath it. And we're going to use one of the mathematical properties of natural logs that you have all multiplied by each other. Ooh, did eagle-eyed people spot a thing I left out of this equation? I hope so. There's a summation. Right? That's important. We need that summation there. It gives us with this side of the equation, uh, having summation nu i natural log activity. Um, which is the same thing also, uh, this will come in handy in a minute, as we could also say the same thing in terms of fugacity. So they're, they're just hanging out here, the little fugacities. We're now going to do two mathematical tricks in rapid succession. So one depends on you remembering uh, a property of stuff that's inside a natural log. So something times uh, something inside the natural log means we get to raise it to that power. Um, and we can kind of bring these all together and multiply them by each other. So that is to say, this term here, uh, including the summation, so all of that is involved, is mathematically equivalent to saying capital Pi, now I'm going to define capital Pi in a second, uh, a i to the new i power. Capital pi is like summation, but it's multiplication. So that is, it's every a i times every other a i in this whole mix um, uh, to the new i power, to its stoichiometric coefficient power. Uh, or equivalently, we might say capital pi, and then uh, write it in terms of fugacity. So either of these is a fair game, is a fair move. So that's the mathematical trick. And then to make our lives easy, um, we are going to define all that, these guys, uh, as Ka. So this is a definition move here. This is just us declaring that we are sick of writing this out. So we are just going to define capital K, so that's clearly a Ka, sub A is equal to these. And as I said, that is a definition. Uh, that's not a solving a problem. So having defined that, uh, we can now turn this into a negative delta G T. Um, whoops, I wrote that backwards. Let's fix that. Uh, T zero okay. over RT equals natural log Ka. I, and then I'm going to write it in its more conventional form, which I'm sure uh, almost all of you have seen before, which is I'm flipping sides. Ka equals E to the negative G over RT. Okay, and so this, by the way, this is not the definition, right? So K is still defined as shown above, uh, but this is the equilibrium condition. So this is the thing that's going to be true at equilibrium. Alrighty, so that's cool. Um, what's up next? So I want you 
since we have just gone to the trouble of uh, defining Ka. Um, Uh, so for that water gas shift, that same reaction we keep solving, the one where it's methane plus steam goes to carbon monoxide plus hydrogen, there's three hydrogens, that reaction, uh, go ahead and tell me what is Ka, and that is based on delta G at 298, which you worked out already. And if you don't know what that is, um, you can look it up. I put it in Moodle. So go take that delta G, stick it into this equation. Uh, tell me what you get. All right. And uh, then tune in for the next movie.